Hey guys, welcome back to the airspace. I'm Bill Kennedy and today we're going to paint up this warrior I'm popping up on the screen right here and we're going to talk a little bit through it and we're going to have some music playing in the background. I've got all of this sped up, some of it faster than the others because we got a lot of work to do. So I'm not going to keep you guys standing here talking. Let's get busy. Okay, as I may have mentioned, I'm using golden high flows on this, and the process that I'm using, I'm using a sketch. The sketch that I laid out there is done with a charcoal pencil on a black powder-coated steel panel. And as you'll notice, I'm doing a lot of freehand textures. You can see a video of mine about doing freehand textures. And I've got this sped up pretty good because I need to get this video whittled down to about under 15 minutes. The beauty of working the way that I am is I am able to go in and sketch things out and place them where I want to using just that white paint and creating some values because I'm going to come back in with black and I'll be able to clean up anything that I want. So any mistakes that we make on this white layer really isn't that important much of a big deal because we can always come back with our black and clean everything up. That's one of the cool things about working on white over black. zoomed in here so you really get an idea of what I'm doing. Again, I cannot stress the importance of how freeing it can be. As you noticed, my sketch was very, very basic and limited, and I am able to just go in here and simply continue to sketch out as we move on. Um, by the way, I do not know the name of what this character is. It's from some kind of game, I am told. It's just a... <laughs> picture I saw on the internet I thought was really cool and wanted to paint it. Notice I'm also working in a pattern where I'm bringing things forward as I add light to them. So as you notice as I'm putting in these pieces that are bumped out I'm adding the white and that's bringing everything forward. The rough figure eight and squiggly line textures I'm creating there gives me a little bit of a hammered metal finish that I'm going for. is how easy I'm going to create that little leather wrap look just by going side to side and then just created that blast of paint up up front of it to create that highlight in the middle. Using Createx Illustration Opaques in this particular case to create that red in the background, which gives me a nice glowy look and just going with a very squiggly line motion, creating some texture back there. And the reason I did that when I did is because I want those hairs to run over that red background. So if you notice, all I'm really doing, I'm going to put in some rough larger shapes and then notice I blast out just to give myself a little bit of color to work with there. And then I come in and just bring some fine lines up and into the background and it really is that simple to do minor hair and fur textures like that okay now i'm going to take some black and i'm going to come back in and i'm going to go in and reinforce all of my shadows and then i'm going to continue to create some texture as we go along so i'll still you see i'll be using some of that shaky hand motion and we're going to be using some figure eight type motions and things like that to fill things in and blending out a little bit so we just reinforce and remember it's just like a shadow so those parts that are bumped out are going to have a shadow beneath them because the light would be coming up somewhat from above and so all of that kind of gives it that punched out look and everything as it gets faded away into the back with the darks they get pushed to the back and the lights are left to come forward 
Notice how it's not just blasting in shadows. Notice we got created some streaky effect in there, which is a natural effect as the metal would get tarnished that it would create in real life. We always want to simulate a little bit of reality. I am going to use a small texture stencil right there to create some of those textures, but notice I always reinforce any stencil work with some freehand work. And using a piece of torn paper there to create some of that texture and almost flaky look in that metal. And then I'm going to use a plain piece of paper in a little bit to create a sharp line. Sometimes free tools are the best tools. do some coloring in now and I'm going to use basically burnt sienna and maybe a little bit of burnt umber over there on the left for that fur and then I'm going to use a little bit of violet on the left hand side a little bit of red transparent and a little bit of blue and it is very important to go very very lightly and those color transitions and choices you can make can help create more depth to your painting. Once my color is in, I'm going to come back and catch a few highlights and I place those highlights where I believe that light would be hitting those objects. Of course, you use your reference. I went off reference in some places and follow my reference in others. All right, guys, we appreciate you coming by here today. Once again, I'm Bill Kennedy with the Airspace. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you got something out of this video. Going to have lots more content coming out. We are here for the long haul. Anyway, we appreciate y'all. I'll catch you on the next one.